Welcome back guys to our Sierra Z project. Today we are working on the front suspension. We are pulling out the original struts and the uh, lowering springs that are currently on it and replacing it with some street basis Z suspension. And we're also downsizing the wheels to the TSVs that we uh, started with in the rear suspension video. So we're going to get started with the process of pulling everything out of here and getting the new stuff installed. Let's take a look. Here is a great example. of what you don't want your suspension to do when you've just bought a car. Yes, this is what it was like when we bought this, and it's a good thing we're overhauling because this is all gonna get tightened up by the end of the day. Now, when you're working with the front suspension stuff, you wanna make sure and support the front knuckle and uh, wheel hub because you do not want this to tip forward and pull your axle out. That's really bad, and it's going to be a real pain to get back in. So you want to make sure that you support the end of the control arm and give something to tie this back or brace it against so it doesn't flop all the way out while you're working here. Now with the wheel off and everything jacked up, it's a good idea to check the other bushings and things with the other parts to make sure there's no broken seals, leaking or anything like that. We do have some damage to our control arm joint here, so that's definitely going to need to be replaced eventually. We'll tackle that in another video along with the sway bar links and sway bar. But today we're just going to get the coilovers out of the way. We're going to need to remove these hoses from the uh, mounting points on the strut. And we're going to have to take out this 12mm bolt to get the brake line out of the way. This rubber grommet can just be pushed out of the point on the strut. We want to make sure we don't put any pulling or strain on these while we're working and uh, risk breaking those. So we've got our two main bolts here at the base of the strut. We've got where the sway bar end link attaches and then of course the mounting at the top into the frame. Just like we had with the rears, the top nuts of these are pretty rusted and corroded so we're going to put some penetrant on there before we get too far into this. Now while it's probably possible to access this and remove it uh, with some small tools and a lot of elbow grease, it's going to be easier if we remove all this plastic cowling that goes along the top of the engine bay here. So let's get that out. There's a small piece of trim in each corner. Mine are missing right now. I have new ones, but they pop out with a plastic clip right here. I'm going to pull this weather stripping off here. Now each of the windshield wipers has a small rubber cap right here that we need to remove. The one for this wiper is underneath this little bit of plastic right here, so we'll have to take that off as well. Having a plastic pry tool to get rid of this piece is really helpful. Now this piece attaches with three plastic tabs on the corners into these slots, and we'll have to use some force to pry it out, but it just comes straight up. Now with that out of the way, we can access the rubber boot over the nut here. And we'll do the same for our main one over here. With those covers out of the way, we can now use a 14 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the top nuts. Now that those are out of the way, you can pull the entire wiper arm free from the motor. There's also a plastic push pin, one on each side, that can be removed by squeezing the bottom with pliers and pulling up. Now with the wipers removed, this whole plastic trim is just held in with pop clips from underneath. Now our cowling is completely free, 
and we have much easier access to the top nuts for the suspension. You will still have your wiper fluid hose that runs up inside of the nozzles, so just make sure you don't put any undue tension on that. Now once the penetrant has soaked in here a fair bit, we're going to use a 6mm Allen key, preferably a long one for the best amount of torque. And that inserts into the center to keep the center of the piston from spinning. And a 17mm wrench to turn the nut on top here. Now if, unlike mine, your top nuts are still in good shape, it's still recommended to buy new ones and use those. And I'll have the part number on the screen for that. Also keep in mind that in addition to this top mount here, there's a washer that must be included as well. So we've got part numbers for those as well. Okay, now to remove the nut for our sway uh, end link, we're going to use a 5mm Allen key and again a 17mm bolt. Now finally we've got our two lower bolts here. These are going to be 19 millimeters. Once you have them cracked loose a little bit, there's a nut on the other side you'll need to hold with the same wrench. Watch out for your brake line, make sure you don't pinch that. Now with the bolts loose, we're going to start getting play in the suspensions, so this is where we're going to want to make sure that our uh, control arm is supported and our something's pressing against the rotor or keeping it lifted mostly straight up so it doesn't fall down and pull out our axle. Now that we've removed these two bolts, the sway bar end link nut and the top nut, our strut is free and we are ready to start pulling it out carefully. Now if you already purchased complete strut and spring assemblies like I'm showing here, you're going to have your top hats already mounted up with the proper hardware on top of the strut. But if you're installing lowering springs on your existing struts, or you're using aftermarket coilovers like I am here, you're probably going to need to remove and reuse your OEM top hat hardware. So in this section we're going to compress the spring and remove the hardware. You can also buy new hardware if you like using the part numbers shown here. Now I'm not a trained or professional mechanic and the steps and tools I'm about to show you may not be the best way to remove your springs, but you can get spring compressors from your local auto parts store easily and as long as you are cautious and follow safety steps, this is definitely a quick and cheap way to get your springs compressed and remove your top hat hardware. Now there's two very important things to keep in mind when using spring compressors. Number one is eye protection. You never know what will happen, better to be safe than sorry. And two is to clamp down little bits at a time on both sides. You don't want to end up with a, a spring that's getting squished on one side and not on the other. One of these could slip and fly off. That's also a bad time. So make sure you're doing little bits at a time on each side to compress. Now as you've seen here, because of the way the factory strut is sometimes, you'll have to get creative with the orientation and how you're adjusting these. But uh, either way, just take your time with it. There's no rush and just go slow until all the tension is released from the spring and this top hat moves freely. Once that spring is low enough and you start to feel a little bit of play here, 
we can loosen this other nut and get the rest of the top hat pulled out. Okay, with the top nut off, our bushing. Now our new shocks include a bump stop, a dust cover, and there's also a separate top plate here. So we're only going to reuse the factory bushing and a new nut. So this bearing is the part we need to reuse from the stock absorber. And uh, we actually have a new one to replace this with. But once you're finished with that, you can loosen up the spring assembly. Or if you're just replacing the spring, install the new one, tighten it back down, reinstall the top mount and nut and we'll continue. Right off the bat, we are gonna start off installing these as low as they can go as well. So these are already torqued down where they need to be. So now we just need to torque down this top one to the coilover spec. Now we're gonna do that by gripping the center piston tube on the top here where these threads have been milled to kind of a squared off look. So we can clamp something there and then we're gonna use our 17 millimeter wrench to tighten this nut. Now, just like with the stock one, we'll have to compress the spring. You can see that it has quite a bit of force, and we still have to get this nut down quite a ways. So, we'll compress these down so we can tighten this all the way where it needs to go, and then slowly relieve that tension. We can squeeze that factory rubber top on there, and now we can reinstall this in the chassis. Okay, so we've got all the hardware we need on the top. Now we're going to slowly reinsert this and get it lined up with everything that needs to be present. And we'll use one of the old bolts just temporarily to keep this somewhat lined up here while we get the top reinstalled. We'll jack this up a little bit more. So we've got the top coming through now. We want to make sure that as we're jacking this up slowly that we're keeping this centered where it needs to go. That looks about right there. So let's get the top half reassembled here so our strut can hang down and we can get everything else tightened up below. So this is where you would reinstall the top rebump stop, the spring washer, and the nut. The nut needs to be reused anyway, and we also got new ones of these. These are a little bit dented, the rubber is cracking and splitting a little bit, so we bought new parts. Okay, so here's our rebump stop right here, washer. Now for the top nut, we actually went with this unit, which is for the Honda Fit. It'll install the same way, but you do still have to have that washer but it uh, just gives us a little bit more peace of mind with that extra width over the whole top of the strut. Once we've got that top nut on, we're gonna torque that to 32 foot-pounds, and that is also a 17 millimeter. Now if you can't get it to tighten far enough to click the torque wrench without the piston spinning, Go ahead and clamp something here and just give it an extra little bit of a turn to make sure that it's really secure on there. You don't want that loosening up and vibrating over time. Now since our vehicle was missing these, we also ordered the little topper caps 
Not really as necessary since there's no hex inside here to keep clean, but it's still just good to have anyway. Part number is also there. So now that we've got the top hat completely torqued down, we can get these two uh, main bolts for the hub here, as well as this one for the sway bar end link installed. Now we're using the old ones here. You can reuse the old ones and nuts just fine. Make sure you torque them to the right spec. We have new ones that we're going to be putting in just because. And we also have a set of SPC camber bolts that are going to go in the top side here for a little bit of angle. And of course we'll have to have an alignment done after this is all finished, so it's not going to be exact right now, but we can at least throw them in. Don't forget to reinstall the 12mm bolt here and clip the grommet back into the strut. We'll get our sway bar end link nut tightened up. Once you have your camber bolt turned where you want and double check that all the hardware is completely torqued down to spec and that the cables and grommets are back in the rightful place, we can put the wheel back on and drop this to the ground. Okay, now that that's all done, we need to make sure and reinstall our hyper cowling here. Well, that's about all there is to it to replacing the front struts and springs, and the most important thing to keep in mind is just making sure everything is tightened down to spec. Uh, we've taken it on a few test drives, it's handled much better, all the clunking on the front end is gone uh, for the most part, and we do still need an alignment to really dial everything in, but first we need to replace those control arms, so stay tuned because we'll tackle that in a future video. Otherwise, the suspension is much better and it's lowered down as, about as far as we want it, so that's about all for now. Thank you for watching.